I mean, just looking, looking at them uh, across the top of their backs, um, there's some of those that haven't slicked off 100%, but by God, a lot of them have. There's some in there that are better than others. Um, I can point out one that I I don't like, that at the very back. The black one? Yeah, one well, of the darker colored one there. She has, she's still got her winter hair coat on at the very back. Not, not the one sucking. Anyway, on the death triangle, it's on the left side. And there's a there's a hip bone that sticks out. Matter of fact, if we can get close to those cows, folks, we can probably find some that are limited. Um, let's see. See, we're looking at the right side of them as they're grazing that way. You can't look at the right side. It's got to be on the left side. So when you move your cows in the morning and you open the gate up to let them into the new paddock, don't stand on the, don't stand on the left side. Uh, I'm right. sorry, don't stand on the right side of the paddock or the, the gate. Get over on the side where you can observe them as they come through in front of you. And, you know, 20, 30 percent of them are all sunken in. You should have gave them a bigger area. Or in your case, you, you know, Sam's even talking about trying to stretch this out, maybe feeding some hay to buy more time. What percentage of weight would you let your heifers lose during the cold season without freaking out <laughs> or supplementing? Is there a percentage, you know? What percentage of weight would yeah. I let them lose? Yeah. Without supplementing or going into freak mode. <laughs> I wouldn't want them to go below a body condition score of four. They go below four. You, you're starting to count the rib bones, mm -hmm. uh, the, the vertebrae. The that's not good. Poking out. Yeah, you don't want that. I hate bones sticking out on my cattle. Mm -hmm. It makes me look like a terrible livestock producer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so don't don't get numb to seeing skinny cattle. It's not normal. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to end up with about um, probably. Uh, <coughs> 30 to 40 percent open <coughs> that don't breed back. That's a waste. That's a loss. It's a loss. It's a huge loss. You're not going to make that up. There's some really, really, really nice steers in there. Um, you know, you look at this guy here on the far left, the white face. That's just a beautiful animal. Um, you can see his thymus glands on his neck shining. That little patch right there lower on the neck. That's telling you that all of his internal organs are working really well. Um, he's got a really nice dark streak down the middle of his back. And it looks like you put armor all on him. <laughs> he doesn't have the fat quite in his tail head. He's getting it. Now, and you see when he, that tail comes around the swat at a fly, there's a wrinkle there. Now let's look at this black guy, if he'll come up here a little closer. Um, in the, the brisket, in between the front legs, you like to see that brisket filled out nice. Okay, if the brisket isn't filled out, um, they're they're not they're not ready to butcher as well. This black one, I haven't seen his tail head yet, but he's he's carrying quite a bit of cover. Um, he's got some good meat on him. And you get over here without him moving. But see his tail. Um, you can still see the vertebrae coming off the top of his tail right there, the bone structure. You shouldn't be able to see that. That needs to be buried in fat. And folks, the tail head, the fat on the tail head, that's one of the last places that the fat is laid down. Okay? But he, he's going to make a really nice steer. I mean, you can tell that. Those black ones look really good. Um, and I'm not a black cow person, but those look good. You know. The gut feels good. What's that? The gut feels good. Yeah, they got good gut feel. Um, oh, the death triangle. If we're gonna get nitpicky. I can this, this black one when he stands just right. Uh, there, on his left side, there's a little bit of a sunken in spot right there. See it? Mm -hmm. See that sunken in spot? Yeah. You don't want to see that on a steer. Like when he's breathing, that part yep. Going in see it? It's going in. That yeah. shouldn't be like that. It's, it's telling you he's not getting enough to eat. That means he's not gonna finish as fast as he would if that was full. See it? It's real easy to see on him. Um, most of these are fairly full. They're, this little guy back here on the back, the white tag right there, that, that red one, yeah. 
Yes. He's got a snow in his spot. Greg, to your right there, that little brown one. Which one? Right, right the brown one. 1803? Yeah. 1803. Right in front. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's sunk in here. Yep. That calf is limited. So he's, you know, he's probably only gaining today maybe half a pound. Maybe. But folks, these, these, these steers are built right. They've got the, the nice fine bone. They, they all got pretty darn good hair coats. Yeah, there's a few that's got some rough hair. But I'll, I'll warn you on that. It's always the younger ones are always going to be later shedding off. If you've got an older one like this guy and he hasn't shed off yet, this calf probably has some parasites in him. Or something, or something going on with him. He's a little larger frame, so maybe there's not enough energy here in the grass for him to even shed off. But the younger ones, the smaller ones, they are shedding off. Here's a calf that's severely limited right here in front of us. Right here. This little one looking there. Uh, 5318. That calf is skinny. Look at the death triangle on this side. I mean, it is sunken in like a cereal bowl. I mean, he's awful. That, that calf is doing awful. Even though he's slick, he's not putting on any weight. What's your comment on the two Charlotte looking ones there? How are they competing with this with these other animals? The, the question was how the two Charlotte ones competing. I can't see the other one. <laughs> this one doesn't look too bad. I mean, he's got good looking thymus gland on him. He's got a nice brisket on the front. He's gonna make a pretty good. Now you can good there. He looks fine. He doesn't have a death behind. No, he looks fine. What is it name, Greg? You got, you got a little heifer in there. We got seven in here. Okay. On the heifers, uh, coming from the vulva down to the udder, there's an area there, the wider that is, they call it the astuchion. The wider that area is, it looks like mole hair. The wider that is going down to the udder, the higher butter fat that she's going to have mm -hmm. for her calf and her milk. If you got a little narrow astuchion on a cow, it's not good. Look at the udder on the cow. She's got six teats. That's phenomenal. So you got four that gives milk, and you got the two fakes on the back. That's a good sign. What does it show you? It just shows you that she's a high butter fat. She's got a lot more butter fat. Folks, here's the problem with our cows today. We've got them producing so much milk that the baby calves get full before they ever get to the butter fat. The butter fat's at the very end. So they got to suck that teat completely dry before they get the cream. Well, if a cow's giving a lot of milk and Junior gets full, he's like, I'm done, Mom. He never gets to the milk. He never gets to the cream. A good, dairy, a good beef cow should give about 250 pounds of butter fat during, during that full lactation with that calf. And if a calf gets butter fat, folks, those are the herd changers. Those are the guys that fill out and the girls and make excellent replacement animals. It's butter fat. It's not flood milk. 